is reopened. I know it's everyone's fun film part of the episode. So um, apparently, um, Samana and Antonio, a German and um, Spanish guy, uh, were walking their dog, and the dog was out in the water, and they had a croc try and take the dog. So the croc's back. Now he said it's four meters. Now because people are notoriously hopeless at judging distances and lengths, I'm assuming it's going to be about six or seven feet instead of 13 feet. So let's go see if we can find some tracks. Most of these are dog prints, but you can see a slither mark from the croc. Yeah, the croc is back. But he's not four meters. Look, I'm no expert on crocs. But that's um, smaller than my handprint. And the one that I saw, which is about 10 feet, had the same size handprint. So I would say it's probably six or seven feet. There you go. All right. Well, we're going to try and find it. Maybe I need to buy a dog. It's a bit harsh. People would never do that to a poor dog. Crop watch again. Um, this is the fourth day. We're still looking for just sign, you know, just more prints. Um, I suspect during this pandemic that um, the gooners have eaten. Well, there was one big one about 10 foot, and then there was about a seven or eight foot one, and I suspect that they've eaten it. Or they were a bit worried that they were coming close to the boats and they didn't want the tourists to freak out and they just killed them so usually when they kill them they eat them oh, well, that's what I think uh, the Cubans certainly eat them every kids above 8 foot they eat them anyway they have to be quiet now This is the spot where I saw both the smaller croc and larger croc together about a year ago. Although the larger croc spends more time on another island away from all the boats, the smaller one was almost always around here. But there is no fresh sign here at all. Maybe being a bit bigger, he's a bit wiser and only comes back here infrequently. Who knows? No luck, but I will keep on trying to find them. Oh, I'll go check out um, Croc Beach later on. Very disappointing. Look at those clouds. This is crazy. Boiling away. Storming two or three times a day. It's great. On a typical day around Panama, the clouds start boiling away early, sometimes leading to cumulonimbus with anvil tops like these, accompanied by short, violent storms. But sometimes they just rain themselves out and lead to beautiful clear skies late afternoon like this.
I had been looking on this island, but this is usually the place where boats anchor and there's lots of dinghy activity around. So the next day I went all the way over here, over to this island. On the other side is what I call Croc Beach. A year back, this is where I found the big croc tracks. Being bigger and presumably wiser, you would think this croc would keep away from popular anchorages, but not at all. At times, this croc would show up daily and do his cruise through the boats, no doubt looking for an easy snack like a dog on the back steps of a catamaran or perhaps a small human. Now back to the present in this rarely visited island over here. Unfortunately, there was no sign of any croc around here at all. But we can't be too disheartened, people. This island is 90% lagoon and mangrove in its middle, so there are plenty of places for it to live without ever being seen by anyone. Maybe there are a few big ones around, who knows? At least that's what I'm hoping. A brand new day and another six hours in the water. I'm in heaven, people. Too early on in the dive to take this one, so I'll let him be.
I always like to know what they've been eating. Makes me a better hunter. Here we have a small crab. So dog snappers usually have a sandy, shoaly area right nearby them. I'm deliberately leaving lots of meat near the spines up top and bottom since I'll eat it from the carcass later. Just slicing all along so the marinade sauce and salt will get right in. Unfortunately, the fish is too large to fit into the smoker, so I have to make it fit. Okay, it's bloody hot and I'm not gonna put on any clothes because it's just too hot. Um, what have we got in here so far is uh, fresh rosemary and roasted rosemary. Put some teriyaki in. These are exact measurements. This is really important. Just a dash of balsamic. I don't know why. But I met a yachty of like 15 years cruising and he says it makes it good. So let's just try it out. We just mix it up. Mix it in. Now these are my favorite, the carcasses. It would be better if the fish was swimming in more of the marinade sauce, but I'm short of all that stuff, so I have to conserve. I'm trying to get this bloody lid on it. And because we don't have a fridge, um, well, we do have a fridge, but it's not on. I'm just gonna leave it like that for a couple of hours. It's not gonna go off, and then we'll smoke it, and we'll see how it is. This is just coconut palm the stuff that comes out from the um, the palm fronds it's like hessian bag material you can also use dried coconut husks this is a bit of cinnamon bark to put that on all right and i didn't salt them yet because i wanted to put a little bit more salt on we'll find some place to go maybe down to barbados it's an island off somewhere In the middle of nowhere Sitting in freedom A little bit of smoke coming off now We'll lay on the deck at night So literally in 20 minutes later, that'll be done. A little bit of smoke coming from that. Uh, I won't turn it off just yet because it might just need a little bit more. We're going steady, heading straight and true, sailing to freedom, just me and you. We'll find a quiet place, far out of the way, we'll swim and fish all day, that's the sailing way, so come on aboard. Bikini and a pedal board. We're off to have some fun Sailing to freedom Ready? There you go It's just sitting gently there so you can only imagine how excited I am. How, how's Queen Annie going? Oh, you know. Delicious food. Delicious food. Thank you, guys. Mm. Thank you for the fisherman. Mm. Leave the money on the fridge. It's just a joke. In the middle of nowhere. 